Let us pray. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Yes, we bless you, Lord. You are Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Yes, we love you, Lord. You are Lord. Our Father which art in heaven, we are here to say we love you. We thank you, the entire women in RUCCG worldwide. We are saying we love you. It is only because of you we are existing. Without you, we cannot be anything. It is through your love we have been saved. It is through your love we have been invited into the vineyard to be co-laborers with you. We appreciate it, Daddy, and we are not taking it for granted. We are so grateful. Be thou exalted in Jesus' name. We thank you for women in ministry all over the world in RCCG churches. We are counting days. We are above 25 years now that we've started the Women in the Ministry program. And we thank you, Lord, that you have used this program to equip the church with various gifts. You have used this program, Lord Almighty, to heal sick, to comfort the sorrowful, to provide for the needy, even Lord Almighty, to rule in all aspects of life. We are so grateful. We thank you that through this ministry, your glory has been shown even across the borders, all over the world. We are grateful. And today, Jehovah, as we are starting the Women in the Ministry program for 2023, we are asking that you come and take your seats in our midst again. That which we have never known over the years, please reveal to us. Hold our hands and lift us higher and higher. And that power that you have already promised all of us who are believers, I pray, Lord Almighty, today, you will release more of your power unto us. And we shall not be ordinary women, we shall be women flowing in your power till the end of the day. And your name will be glorified. Blessed be your name forever in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Beloved women in the ministry in RCCG, I want to congratulate every one of us for what God has been doing in our lives over the years since we started the Women in the Ministry program. Not only the women who are ministering alone in our CCG, but even all the women in the, in the parishes, through the program, the women in the parishes have been blessed tremendously. I want to salute all our leaders, those who have taken the leadership role from continental to intercontinental, to provincial, regional, the zonal mummies, area mummies, parish mummies. What a wonder has God used us for. I want to congratulate all of you. I pray that God will continually use us and he will not cast us away in Jesus' name. This year's meeting, the theme is Flowing in his power. Flowing in his power. My text is in the book of Mark chapter 16, verse 17 to 18. Mark 16, 17 to 18. And this time shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. 
They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Brethren, anyone that believes, these are the signs that we follow. And this is our text. And in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, which is for all of us again, Acts 1 is, the Bible tells us that when we have received the power, we shall be witnesses from Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria to the uttermost part of the world. So we can see what the power can do in our lives. And we can see who are the people who should use the power. All of us, without exception, the believers. So, we are going to start by defining terms. What is power? What is power? Power is what makes work easier. It makes work easier. It's the energy behind anything that is done. That is what we call the power. For example, a car cannot move without the engine working. And the lamp cannot bring forth flame except there is oil. And for human beings, anybody who does not eat will not have power to work. We can see what it is, what we call power. And so our Christian life cannot flow except there is power. That is why we say the theme this year will be flowing in its power. And the power we are talking about is not limited to men alone. In that, in that Acts chapter 1, it said, we shall receive power. It didn't say only men. And in Mark chapter 16, 17 to 18 that we read, it said the believers, male and female. So I'm happy that we are all hearing now. We have been reading it. We have been ministering it. It is time for us to apply it into our lives as women in the ministry. Our Christian life is a life of light. And you cannot shine without the power. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1, Isaiah 61 says, Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For everyone in the house today, I can see glory of God upon you. And I believe you are already basking in that glory. And that glory will not fade away in Jesus' name. In Psalm 110 verse 3, Psalm 110 verse 3 says, Your people will offer themselves willingly in the day of your power. That is first part of it. Your people will offer themselves willingly in the day of your power. Even if there is the power of God already available, we still need to offer ourselves. We still need to know to be conversant with the power. We still know, need to remove every form of ignorance and say this power belongs to me. And so, it is time for you and me to begin to flow in that power. And I pray that the God we are serving who has made everything available to us will let us know and will help us at the same time as we know to begin to operate in this power that is available unto us in Jesus' name. I'm going to treat the topic in about five um, outlines five outlines. The first one will be the power of God itself. Then how can we receive the power? Number three is how to flow in, in it. Number four will be evidences of the flowing. And number five will be hindrances to the flow. Number one, the power of God itself. Number two, how can we receive the power? 
Number three, how to flow in it. Number four, evidences of flowing. And number five, hindrances of the flowing. What is the power of God? The Bible tells us in Psalm 62, verse 11. Psalm 62, verse 11. The Bible tells us that, Behold, the Lord has proclaimed to the end of the earth, says to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your salvation comes. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work are recompensed before him. And that Matthew 28, verse 18, he said that this power is given unto us from heaven. Matthew 28, verse 18, which means every power of God does not come from anybody. It comes from him in heaven. Say, all power is given unto me. That's the Lord Jesus Christ saying it. From heaven. And we already know, as we have read in Acts chapter 1, verse 6, that we shall receive the power. The power is the power of the Holy Ghost. Because we are saying, what is this power? It's not the power of the devil. It's the power of the Holy Ghost. And number two, is that the, number three is that the power is not limited. It's not limited. In Jeremiah 32, verse 17, Jeremiah 32, verse 17 says that nothing is too hard for him to do. That is the power of God. It is not limited. And we should know that the power comes from God. It's not limited. And it is the power that can bring down the Holy Ghost for us to use. And the Remiah 51 verse 15, the Remiah 51 verse 15 says, He has made the earth by his power, and he has established the world by his wisdom, and has stretched out his heaven by his understanding. This power he has used to make the earth, so that we know the extent of this power. We cannot exhaust the list. There are a lot of things the power of God can do. And that is why we have to flow in it, to be an exemplary Christian woman. Then, knowing from our outline that we are saying that what the power, what is the power? Then what is this? The next thing is that how can we receive that power? We can receive the power because God is the giver of the power. And nobody wants to want to flow in it, you want to you want to you need it and you want it, you cherish it, he will give it to you. That is why Acts chapter 1 verse 6, but ye shall receive the power. You can only receive the power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And in Acts chapter 2 verse 4, the apostles received the power. Acts of Apostles chapter 2 verse 4, the Bible tells us that when the day of Pentecost fully came, every one of them, that they had been waiting for 10 days, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. And they began to speak with other tongues. And the Spirit gave them utterance. I believe those of us who have not been baptized with the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost, before we leave this meeting, this weekend, you will receive your baptism, your baptism in Jesus' name. But one thing is that you must be eager, you must desire it. There was this story of one woman, very educated, enlightened woman of God. The general overseer went to a place to minister, and everybody was receiving the power because he was ministering on the Holy Ghost. It remains only three people. This woman made a declaration. He went to the corner and started shouting, I so, 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 and so. I desire the power today. I must not be left out. 
You must please, Lord, give me the power. Give me the power. The gentleman said, I just lay hand on her again, and she received the power. Brethren, as many of us that desire to have the power today in this meeting, the power of the Holy Ghost, which can sustain anything that is of God, God will give to us in the name of Jesus. How can we receive the power? We can receive it when the Holy Ghost come upon us. The apostles received it in Acts chapter 2 when the Holy Ghost came upon them. And they were filled with it. And, and I want to let you know, it's a promise of the Father to us. Acts chapter 2 verse 39. So don't, don't be left out. And when God promises his word, a yea and amen. Verse 39. But that Peter was telling the uh, people that this is a promise of God unto us. And even to our children. In verse 39 of, of Acts of Apostles chapter 2. Um, from to verse 39. It says the promise is unto the Father. And then... If we are all willing, the Lord will bless us with the, fire, the power in the mighty name of Jesus. The third of my outline is how to flow in it. You have talked about how to receive it. How do we flow in the power? The rolling stone gathers no more. The constant feeling of the power will energize the flowing of the power. When we look at the river flowing, it will be flowing, flowing, flowing. If you have been watching it, it will be passing by. You will still see the water flowing because the, the source has not dried up. And glory be to God, the source of our power is in the Holy Ghost. And it can never dry up. It can never dry up. God has made it so good for us that that power has been flowing ever since and it will continue to flow in the mighty name of Jesus. In Acts chapter 2, verse 42 and 46, Acts 2, 42 and 46, the apostle continued daily, steadfastly in the doctrine and fellowshipping because the power was flowing. They were filled with it and they were being filled with the power every day, every day. Every day, they were being filled with the power. And what else can make this power to flow? As we have seen in our outline that we said, how can the power flow? The number two is that the power can flow when there is gladness in our hearts. There must be joy. You can't go to the presence of God who want to walk in the power and you are frowning your face. Anybody you come across, it's like as if you want to show physical combat. No. The apostles, the Bible tells us that they have gladness of heart and singleness of heart. It will help in the flowing. You don't have any problem with anybody. Even if you have anybody, you have problem, you settle it in the home with your husband. You cannot operate under any kind of uh, malice or any kind of um, uh, sorrow. When you are flowing in the power, it's not possible. So you have to be glad. You have to operate under the singleness of heart. Number two in flowing, number three is that you must be praising God all the time. For some people, it's not easy for them to praise God. What they do is to, is to ask, 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 ask. But when you praise somebody, ordinary human being, when you praise ordinary human being, you empower him. You energize, it's like you are giving him an injection to do good to you. If it is ordinary smile, or to say thank you, God bless you, that human being will say, how much more when we are talking about God? So, 
we need to praise God always. In Acts chapter 2, verse 47, Acts chapter 2, verse 47, the Bible tells us that the apostles, they were praising God and they have favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily. Brethren, how many times have we left behind in our praying time, praising God, only praising Him alone? Oh, you are the King of glory. You are the Lord of hosts. You are the I am that I am. You are the lily of the valley. We are without you, nothing can be done. You are everlasting. You are glorious in holiness. You are fully praising. Just praising God. God is more than able to do anything. So to flow in that power, we need to praise God always. Because God inhabits in the praises of his people. He inhabits in the praises of his people, as Psalm 22 verse 3 says. Praising God always will enhance us even in the flow of the power. What else will make the power to flow? Gladness of heart. And all we have said, the next one is unity. Brethren, charity begins from home. When the passage in Acts chapter 1 verse uh, uh, 8 says that we should start from Jerusalem. Jerusalem is your house. If you want the power of God to flow in your life as a woman, there must be unity, there must be peace in your home. You can't leave the house and you want to go and minister outside while you are fighting your husband, you are fighting your in-laws, you are not united, you, know, even, you don't even smile to them anytime. You always find your face with them. No peace in the home. And yet you want to flow. What kind of, what will flow out of you? It is what, if it is quarreling and the spirit of, of, of fighting is in you, that is what you are going to flow in outside there. And we don't need that kind of spirit in the church. We need the spirit of unity. That is what the general, the, 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 uh, even our Lord Jesus Christ prayed for while he was living. He said, please make them one. Father, make them one. Unity is essential in the church of God. In Psalm 133 verse 1, Psalm 133 verse 1, he said that how pleasant is, it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. How pleasant. Which means God wants us to dwell in unity. Be united in the spirit and in everything with your husband, with your children, with your neighbors, with your people at work and even in the church is essential. And the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 3 Ephesians 4 says we should even endeavor to keep the unity of the Spirit in the band of peace. Brethren, the Lord we are serving, the Lord we are witnessing to, uh, to people about, is the Prince of Peace. So these, all these things must be part of our lives before we can flow in, this, in the power. Then what are the evidences of flowing in this power? Ask one three. When we see you witnessing. Because it is that what is generating in you, that power. You cannot have the power of God and keep your mouth shut. And you don't witness to people. Ah, my sister, God did this one for me. Even your fathers, those who have not been born again, your mothers, your aunties. Hey, my sister, do you know what? When God saved my soul, you know what I, I was before now? Ah, you, you can't you see a change in my life? That power will be burning in you. You want to tell people what God has used, uh, is doing in your life. Witnessing. That is the, one of the evidences when you begin to flow. You won't keep your mouth shut. It's not possible. It's not possible. 
And this was what happened in the lives of the apostles, that they did not keep their mouths shut. When they received the power in Acts chapter 2, on the day of Pentecost, and people who knew Peter as a coward person before, and they had him, they began to wonder, ah, ah, <laughs> Peter, is this Peter? Yes, it's Peter. Because there's no one who receive this power and not flow in the power. And through Peter and the partner, two of them entering into the um, beautiful gate parish, the man who has always been brought there for 40 years received a ceiling and he started working. I pray that even as we are talking right now, the power will be flowing in you right now. That power of the Holy, the Holy Ghost will begin to generate the power. That after this meeting, you will no longer sit on the fence. You will just be outside there. Anybody you see, wherever you go, the Spirit will quicken you to witness in the mighty name of Jesus. And in verse 40 of Acts chapter 2, verse 40, the Bible tells us, and with many others, other words, did Peter testify and exhort, saying, save yourselves from, the, from this uh, untowards generation. Brethren, we all sing it. We are the chosen generation. What have you contributed to the generation? Have you told them about the one who created them? Have you told the generation about the one, the, the desire of the Lord Jesus Christ towards them? Have you told them how they are going to be released from the bondage of the, of, of the enemy that Satan has put them into? Brethren, we have to have evidences of flowing. We must witness. This is very important. Number two, miracles must begin to happen through us. Miracles. We have heard about what happened to Peter. In Acts chapter 3, the lame man walked. How many, how many people have you witnessed to, even in their need, in their, in their sicknesses, in their physical need, apart from spiritual need, a healthy life, a healthy mind, is a healthy, a healthy soul, is an healthy mind. Somebody who has problem with his, um, his body, who has diseases, even when you witness Christ to him, his mind will still be, I want to be healed. This is very important. And we are the people, the chosen generation. We need to go and show for the power that God has put inside us. We need to flow. I want you to tell your neighbor right and left, you must begin to flow in the power. You must be flowing. You are, we are not limited. Because this power is the promises of the Father. Nobody steals it. It's from, it's from God. The source is from God. Number three, if we are flowing in this power apart from witnesses and healing, nations must be able to change through us. We must bring joy to the heart of the people. In Acts chapter 8, Acts chapter 8, we learned about Philip going to Samaria. Philip going to Samaria in verse 5 of Acts chapter 8, 5 to 6. The Bible tells us that he went down to the city of Samaria and he preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord give heed unto those things which Philip speak. And hearing and seeing the miracles which he did, the Bible says the whole city was filled with joy. Anytime I read that, please, I say, God, make me the Philip of today. Because God is no respecter of person. It is whatever you desire, he will give to you. Since he's a holy one, holy envy, 
Brethren, if Philip alone can go into Samaria and it can happen like that, who will be the next? To go to your village, to go to your city, to go to your neighborhood, to go to your place of work, to go to, to your family meeting and minister to them. God is expecting us. Very soon, I believe, we shall be hearing testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus. What is it again? Is the evidences. Praying for the sick to be healed. It mentions Acts chapter 3, verse 1 and 2, that Peter and John, in the hour of prayer, they went to the, to the, to the temple and the lame man was healed. It is time for us too. It is not everybody that comes to the church that is healthy. God may use you to heal spiritually and physically. I was, by the grace of God, I was in the burial service sitting to, to one elderly woman who, is, who was the friend of the person to be buried. I could see sorrow all over the woman. And then um, when I had the opportunity during the service, when they were doing last respect, I was talking to the elderly woman, saying, Mama, ah, you will soon see your friend. Don't be full of sorrow. Are you born again? I was, and I said, I attend all, all saints' church. I attend this. I said, Mama, I'm not saying the church you are attending. I'm asking you, have you had an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ? Has old things passed away from your life? Have you received the Son of God into your life? I said, okay, that's one. Um, I have no answer to it. So after the burial service, I took the address. By the next day, I was in a house. And before I could reach her on the, in, in the staircase, they had to open eight gates for me. Strong iron gates. I was wondering, what did this woman, what did she have that she had to lock herself up with uh, this kind of gates. Finally, I got to where she was sitting upstairs. And I got to the city room. I can't find anything that is so precious, except one small television cage again. <sighs> and the woman said, ah, my daughter, you can see what happened before you can reach me. I said, yes. I was wondering what is happening. She said, yes, listen to my story. We were very rich. We sent for our children abroad. Two came back. One was a, a lawyer. One, the other one was a medical doctor. But two were repatriated because they got involved in drug. And those two, they have stripped her naked. Nothing. She opened the, 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 the room to me. Come and see. Did you find anything in my room? He said, because while you were ministering to me yesterday in the church, I'd already written my suicidal note, you know, under my pillow. He went, she went inside and brought it to me. I said, Mama, you won't die. You will live to declare the glory of God. Brethren, people are suffering. Not all the people you see in the church are happy. Not all of them know that there is a place better than this world. Not all of them uh, 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 have a blessed hope that we have. Because the Bible says, Christ in us is the hope of glory. Brethren, there are people suffering eternally. And but we, those of us who are flowing in the power, we can release out of what we have to them to make them what they need to be and to release the tension they are carrying, and to let them live a, a, a life of ease and peace. And I pray that even as we are talking about flowing in his power this year, oh, the world will know that there are women in our CCG flowing with power in the mighty name of Jesus. Then, what are the evidences? What about general behavior and relationship? 
Because there are so many things that many of us, we don't, we, we, we think, ah, it is not spirit. We don't want to be spirit cocoa like some people will say. If you want to flow in the power of God, there must be good, you must be of good behavior and relationship with others. Why the apostles were looking for tools for people who will replace those who had been lost among them, they asked for people of good behavior, full of faith, full of power. My dear sister, what is your behavior at home? Are you pleasant? Are you friendly? What is your relationship at home? Your relationship at work? Your relationship in the church of God? Behavior and relationship, it matters. Colossians 1 10. Colossians 1 verse 10. It say that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto the pleasing, unto all pleasing, bring fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Brethren, are you walking worthily? When you go about, what are the comments of people concerning you? The moment you have a snag in your life and people don't give good testimony about you, whatever you say outside there, nobody will receive it. The power cannot flow. The power cannot flow. Good behavior, good relationship with people, we bring pleasing, fruitful, fruitfulness in every good work, both at home, at work, and even the church. People will like to listen to you, and they will like to relate with you. You will be a good counselor to people. Your manners will be worthy of emulation, and people will want to be like you. And believe me honestly, that is one of the pleasant things that I think we should enjoy in the Lord. When you have the Lord, you don't have anything to, you don't have any problem. You shouldn't have any problem. You must be tender hearted. You don't, anything you have does not belong to you. The apostles, they were going from one house to another, breaking bread with gladness of heart. It makes life worthy of living. And this is what we call flowing in the power. Flowing in good behavior and relationship. And the Bible even tells us that uh, we should give to those who have nothing. And we, those of us who have, in Matthew 25, 35, Matthew 25, 35, say, well, well, for I was an on guard, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was stranger, and you took me in. And so on and so forth. Brethren, it is our own time to flow in the power. Good behavior. Good behavior. Good behavior. It has offered so many people pleasant surprises before. When Isaac, when Isaac... Where when Father Abraham sent the servant to go and look for a uh, wife for Isaac, one of the conditions of the servant is that anyone that I see, that I ask for water for the, 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 uh, the herds, and I have for water for myself, is the woman. How many people have you given water to? How much more of giving water to uh, the animal? This is very important. There must be good behavior. If you want to flow in the, in the power, good behavior, a relationship must be there. Brethren, we want to flow in the power. I've told you, um, there must be divine teaching. Divine teaching. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 13. 1 Corinthians 2, 13. We things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, 
comparing spiritual things with, spir with uh, spiritual things with spiritual. It is very important. We cannot be an empty, empty Christians, empty women without being filled with the word, without being a teacher of the word. That when people are ignorant of the word, we ask us some things and we cannot answer. Then what are we carrying about? Empty vessel. It's very important. It must be filled with the word. Because the word that the Bible, the, the Bible says that the word is speak is with power and is spirit. This is very important. It is very important that we, the, the, the word will give us op opportunity to flow more. So there must be divine teaching. We must sit down at the feet of, of Christ to learn, dig in deep, faith clinic, uh, Bible studies, um, Sunday school, all those teachings, seminars, we, are, we can gain and we add more virtue to our lives. Very important. If not, it will be empty. And empty vessel, there is nothing you can do when you are empty. You can't flow. This is very important. So instead of us watching television 24 hours of the day, reading newspaper, okay, read the word. Read the word. Discover new things from the word every day. And get empowered, get enriched with the word. It's very important. The word that is given to us is, more, is better than gold or silver. Because it is through the word you can suppress the, the enemy, suppress this devil. Jesus used the word to suppress the enemy and to conquer the enemy. I pray that as we determine to begin to flow in the power more than ever before, the word of God will dwell in us richly in Jesus' name. Then, what will happen when we are flowing in this power? That is the, the next to the last one. The, there will be impossibility will become possible. Impossibility will become possible. There will be breakthrough for us. When you are flowing with the power, you move from one degree of glory to another. This is very important. Very, very important. In, Acts, in Luke chapter 1 verse 37. In Luke chapter 1 verse 37. Mary had an encounter with the angel about the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when Mary didn't have any clue for the message delivered to her, she said, I don't know anybody, I don't, I've never met a man like that. How am I going to carry the pregnancy? The Holy Spirit. And what will he do? Because it's through the Holy Spirit, impossibility becomes possible. That is the door and a door opener to every form of impossibility. When the door, when we are filled and we are flowing with the power, impossibility will become possible. Number two, when we flow with the power, then we move from one degree of glory to another because that spirit will not allow you to sit down. The book of Isaiah tells us, Arise, shine. Your light has come. The glory of God has is risen upon you. Then we begin to shine. We begin to flow from one degree of flowing to another. That is very, very important. Then there will be display of divine wisdom. Those are the evidences. The, the display of divine wisdom. Wisdom in verse 10 of um, the book of Acts, chapter 6. Stephen was full of wisdom. Brethren, you and me, we need wisdom. Proverbs 14 1 says, It is wisdom of God, it's what the women use to build their home. If you are flowing the power of the Holy Ghost, one of the things that will help you 
is to display divine wisdom. When you notice that there's a tension in the house, divine wisdom will say you don't answer when your husband is running in, in, in anger. You keep quiet. If you don't have anything to do, go and be praying. Divine wisdom. Because we want peace. Display of with divine wisdom. Brethren, today is a day of new beginning for all of us. And I believe once our God is not a respecter of person, he gave this uh, Peter and the rest of the apostles as example to us, and we are already in it, we too we shall flow in the power of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, finally, there can be hindrances for the power to flow. Number one, we shouldn't grieve the Holy Spirit. The moment we grieve the Holy Spirit, it will not longer flow. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. Ephesians 4, 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby we are sealed unto the day of redemption. Because the Holy Spirit is the source from God's which power flow. How do we grieve him? <laughs> you can grieve him with disobedience. You know when you are disobeying God, you know yourself. You don't pay your tithe and offering. You don't, you, you don't obey the Ten Commandments. You, you, can't, you can't flow when you are in uh, adultery and fornication. When you are covetous, you can't flow. When you are not satisfied with God, what God has given to you. Because that is one of the diseases, major diseases of all the women. They are never satisfied. Many are never satisfied. Women are full of, full of envy. If you want to be like somebody that you, you like, the Bible says we should kneel down and ask God who gives liberally. Whatever we want, God can give to us. Just pray to him. He say we should ask in our joy before. How should we be filled with spirit of envy? When God is there, who can do all things for you? Then, godliness with contentment. It's a great gain for us. We should be contented with whatever we have. Apart from disobedience, because... Saul, King Saul was disobedient. He lost the spirit. And the spirit of the devil replaced the spirit of God for him. This will not be our portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Number three, we should be honest and faithful. We should be honest and faithful. Acts chapter 5, 1 to 11. Those of us who are always supporting our husband to do evil, to go and abuse the boss or plan evil for the boss in his office, we should be careful. Ananiah and Sapphira, they were in the church of God. They saw somebody who did well. They too, they had good intention, but not in honesty. At the end of the day, what happened? They grieved the Holy Spirit and they died on timely death. Acts chapter 5, verse 1 to 11. I pray this will not be our portion in the mighty name of Jesus. We should, not, we should not help our husband to be dishonest at work. Be contented with whatever you have. Uh, Peter was telling them, before you sold the land, is it not God that gives you the land? What is it that we have, we have today that is not God that has given it to us? Why can't, re why can't we release it? Many of us, we hoard, we hoard our talents. That which God has given to us, we even hoard it to him. <laughs> and we say, no, I'm not the only one in the church. Oh. Brethren, 1 Corinthians 2.11, uh, 2.12. Now we have received, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are friendly given that are freely given, sorry, to us by God. Freely we have been given. Whatever we have is not by our own making. 
Whatever talent God has given to us, if you want to flow in the power, don't hold it again. Let us begin to use it to benefit the kingdom of God, to benefit our lives and our children, our neighbors, relatives, our nations. This is very important. The last but not the least must be occupied till it comes. If you don't hold the spirits, if you don't want hold hindrance to the flowing, you must use it continually. The apostles, they will continue in the doctrine. They continue. They never stopped. Brethren, today is a new day. I'm so happy as I'm talking to you. I myself am basking inside me in the Holy Spirit, in the flow. If you ask me to talk for hours on this, I can. Because I know what I'm talking about by the special grace of God. I'm experiencing it daily. And I'm never tired. God has put that spirit in me. He has instilled it in me. And I give him all the glory. And I want you, all of us together to join hands to flow in the spirit. Let's flow in this power. The power is not limited. The source can never dry. It's the Holy Ghost. God has the source. Why don't you, why don't you now cling to him, take your source from him, and begin your power from him, and begin to flow? Brethren, it's a good thing to flow in the power. God is no respecter of person. Be determined to be baptized today. Disciples, the disciples, they waited for 10 days. And yet they got it. And they received it and they were being filled continually, every day, every day. And they were steadfast in it. Brethren, and they were moving from glory to glory. This is our portion too. In the mighty name of Jesus. We shall never run dry. The Spirit of God will continue to flow in us. And it will spring forth till the end of the day. In the mighty name of Jesus. Probably you would like to pray today. Those of us, we have three categories of people in the house now. Those who have not received the Holy Ghost, you can receive. It's the promise of the Father. If you desire it, God is here. He can baptize you. He did it for Cornelius. He can do it for you and your family. Number two, if you have received, you sat on the fence, you didn't use it. Today is a new day for you. Begin to ask God now to give you the grace to begin to flow in the power. And those of us who have been flowing, we need to pray that God will help us to continue to the end of the day. And that we will not be lazy. We will not sit on the fence. We will not cause any hindrance for ourselves. And we will be of good behavior. Shall we begin to pray? If you are in the house, you have not even accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you came for this meeting. Oh, I have a good news for you today. Jesus loves you. He died for your sin. And he says, if your sin is as red as colors, he will wash you and you will be white as snow. And he's no respecter of person. He doesn't discard people. If you come to him today and you say, Lord, I want you to save my soul. I know I am a sinner. I want you to please wash me. The blood of Jesus cleanses from all sin. Come to him today. He will cleanse you. He will wash you. And you will be part of these blessed women we are talking about who want to be flowing in the power of the Holy Ghost. Repent today. Give your life to Christ. He will write your name in the book of life. And at the end of the day, you will reign with him in glory. The rest of us, let us begin to thank God for that power. Let's begin to thank him for the power that can help us to do all things, make impossibility possible that can help us to be identified with Christ, even in well-doing, identified with Christ in power, in witnessing, in healing the sick. 
let us begin to ask him today, even as we thank him, that Lord, begin a new walk in my life today. I want to flow incessantly, continue forever and ever. No stopping. Help me to occupy till you come. Let me flow continually. Holy Spirit, carry me today. Help me, Lord. Holy Spirit, let me flow till I see my God in glory. Use me. Use me, oh Lord. Use me to heal the sick. Use me to erase the dead. Use me, Lord Almighty, for people of the world to know who you are. Use me to witness. Use me, O oh Lord, to bring joy to the houses of people, even to bring food on the table of some people. Lord, use me. Use me in a comprehensive way. The Bible tells me in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, that you, my Lord and my Savior, after you have been anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power, you went about doing good. This is what I want, my Lord. I want to begin to, I want to be going about, flowing, doing good, healing all manners of sicknesses, and even delivering the oppressed. Jehovah, this is my portion. This is what I want today. Oh, quicken my spirit, Lord, and let me begin to flow. Don't let me leave this meeting without the spirit of flowing. Everything that has died and has been sitting down in me without flowing, quicken them now. Jehovah, quicken them. Jehovah, makashikele maya. So, so, le makuri kingi biko talamako kurika. Oh, Jehovah, I want to flow. I want to flow. This meeting is for me. I have sat down on the fence for long. I have been sleeping for long. Jehovah, as you are waking me up, Lord, quicken my spirit to flow in you to the end of the day. Don't let me be weary. Don't let me be tired. Help me, Lord. Help me till I see you in glory. Thank you, Father. Let us begin to bring our prayer to a close. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Jehovah, Rimika, Shikeyemo, Kuta, Kedima, Kashemo. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Everlasting Father, we want to thank you. We give you praise for this time of refreshing before you. We thank you because you are our good God. You have already told us that you came for everybody. Christ for the whole world, and including women. And we thank you for all the power you have sent through the Holy Ghost that is for all of us. For all your children that have come to you today to say, Lord, we want to be saved. We want to receive you into our lives. For all of them, please, Lord, forgive their sins, cleanse them with the blood of Jesus, and write their names in the book of life. And let them, Lord, begin to walk for you, baptize them with the power of the Holy Ghost. And all of us, as we have determined to flow in the Spirit, Father, we pray that more than ever before, you will empower us. You will make us to be steadfast. We will continue in your doctrine. Good behavior will be our portion. We will be honest. We will be faithful. We will only be found where there is your good will and we shall do your good works. Anywhere we go, Father, let there be joy. As you did for Philip, let there be joy anywhere we go. Let there be healings. Let there be... Let there be deliverance for the people who are oppressed. Oh, let the fire begin to burn in our lives right now. Help us, Lord, and help us to flow to the end of the day. Help us to be occupied in you. Don't let us relent our efforts, and don't let us be weary. Don't let us be tired. Thank you for everything. We are grateful. We are grateful. By this time next year, and everybody, every one of us, we come back. If you tarry, let us come back with testimonies. 
testimony of greater works in you. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen.